Hi guys, Matt from ESU, and today we're going to look at um, how you set up your Loke Sound Decoder to use an ESU power pack. There's some settings that we need to look at. Um, this can all be done by CVs. You don't need to use the Loke Programmer for this, but it certainly does make it easier like everything else. Um, the Loke Programmer is a powerful tool, and again, it's absolutely not needed, but it is a get-to, not a got-to. You don't have to have it. Um, you can make all the changes that we're going to do here today uh, using the free software software without any hardware go up to tools and show change CVs and it'll show you just CV wise what you need to enter into your log or your uh, command station just like any other decoder out there by that has to be done only by CVs we give you the tools to make it a little bit easier but you certainly don't need to use them so let's get into again how you set up a power pack an ESU power pack within the low programming software so many decoders um, I should should say some decoders not many um, have some different options as to where the power pack needs to be controlled to if you're talking about one of the new nanos uh, the motherboard on there you need to control the power pack with aux 3 the ho decoders are typically through aux uh, 10 uh, i'm sorry aux 9 and the micro decoders are typically through aux 7 so as a default, we've already set up for the micro and the HO decoders um, for the power pack to be already controlled by AUX7 and AUX9. But if you've made a custom file or you need to set something up a little differently, uh, say we're going to work with a nano decoder today, we want to set that up to be a power pack control as well. So all we really need to do once we have everything hooked up according to the instructions, we need to go into AUX3 again on the nano um, you know we need to have that set up for power pack control so as is a good practice we're just going to name this power pack uh, control <laughs> and then we're going to go down to the output mode effect and we're going to change this to power pack control and that's it it's that simple now when through the data lines of the decoder talking to our smart power pack um, which is more than just simply a couple capacitors there's intelligence there because it needs to be able to buffer a sound file when you're loading it with a power pack installed um, it's a slow charging unit so um, we want to make sure that all of that information gets to the power pack properly and that's why we need to set it up on the output that is specified as a power pack controlled device. Um, once that's done, we also want to go in and look at your, um, your settings for the control over the power pack. So that would be under uh, driving characteristics and we wanna scroll down and we're gonna see that CV113 uh, we may want to decrease or increase right now set at 127 you're going to get 4.16 seconds out of the power pack so if you lose power it's going to be active for about 4.16 seconds um, now there are situations where actually you don't want this much time that you might want it to be less so if you have certain uh, European braking uh, functions active or things like that it may be a little less in North America we typically um, I on my own layout we keep typically keep this just as it is um, if you have too much time then sometimes you can derail and it'll just keep going and cause some problems you can short it out it can fall it can land on the floor uh, we can have some major damage so um, I find that you know about four seconds is, a, is enough time to easily get over any little problems in your track uh, but not create so much problem that you might damage your equipment um, and remember guys uh, a power pack is not battery control so it still requires you to clean your track it will recharge itself after a certain period of time so you, you're really only using just a little bit of it at a time but if it can't charge itself because the track is that dirty then it's really not doing you that much good so do please even with power packs make sure that your track is clean so remember we can go up to uh, tools and uh, look at the 
uh, show change CVs and it'll show us the CVs that need to be changed um, in your command station just by using individual CVs. You don't need the local programmer software in order to do this, but if you have it, by all means use it. It will make things definitely easier for you. So, so that's basically it. Um, so you want to remember, you want to go back and you want to set whatever auxiliary output is correct for a power pack on the decoder that you're using. Set it the output mode to power pack control, and then you want to go to driving characteristics and you want to adjust the power pack interruption time. Uh, you know, as to whatever you need um, for your particular install and track conditions. So. I, I hope that that's clear. Don't forget to write that to the decoder. Just changing it on your screen does not actually put it into the, the locomotive. So always make sure that you write your CVs. And if you want that to be the default settings, make sure that this box is continued to be checked. So I hope that's clear, everybody. If you have any questions, email us at support at locsound.com. Have fun. Take care now.